Hi, this is Fabian, and I'm going to show you how to assemble a PIC64 kit step-by-step step in this tutorial. First, uh, let's take a look at what the kit looks like once it's assembled. So let's start by reviewing the main components of the kit. We have a printed circuit board and a case bottom. We have resistors, nine of them. We have IC sockets. We have a Neduino Mini and an LED driver. We have an SD socket. We have a voltage regulator. We have a little speaker and two wires to connect it. We have an LED matrix, 8x8, red. We have uh, male pin headers. We have a couple capacitors. And of course, we have two joysticks. To build the kit, you will need a soldering iron, wire snippers, and a sponge at the very minimum. Other tools are not necessary. Let's start by securing the SD socket onto the PCB. Start by soldering the large ground pins on the edges of the SD socket. Once you're done with the ground pins, solder the small pins at the bottom of the connector starting from the left to the right, but uh, leave out the last two tiny pins on the connector. These uh, last two pins are the card detect and write protect detection pins, and they are not connected to the Neduino Mini. Next, you need to flip the PCB over. And we are going to set the skinny 24-pin IC socket holding the LED driver onto the back of the PCB. Be sure to match the little cutout that's indicated on the silk screen to the notch on the IC socket. To keep the IC socket into place, fold its pins over to hug the PCB. This will ensure that the IC socket does not move at all while you solder it. Next up, we have the 54.9K ohm resistor that is used with the LED driver. Notice that this resistor is a little too long to fit perfectly into the PCB, so you will need to either fold its legs to, to fit it into the, the holes, or um, set the resistor at an angle uh, so that it forms a triangle uh, to fit the PCB. Then uh, solder up the resistor and snip the legs off right above the solder joint. Next up is the LED matrix. The package of the matrix has lettering on the side. Be sure that that lettering is facing the alien logo on the PCB, otherwise it will be mounted backwards. Our next component is the IC socket supporting the Neduino Mini. Uh, this is exactly the same process as the one we saw for the IC socket supporting the LED driver earlier. So insert it into the PCB, fold its pins, and then solder it up. Our next part is the power switch. Uh, the power switch will need to be secured to the PCB with some masking tape so that you can solder it, otherwise it will fall off at the moment you flip the board. Next up is the 1K resistor. Uh, you will need to set that resistor vertically into the board, so fold one of its legs over so that it's parallel to the body of the resistor, then insert it into the PCB. Uh, 
Our next part is the red LED. Notice that one of the legs is shorter than the other and must be matched with the flat side of the suck screen. Before soldering the power LED, we're also going to place the volume trimmer into the PCB. With a small screwdriver, adjust the volume by turning the wheel of the trimmer all the way to the left. Next, we're going to fit the power jack into the PCB. Uh, this part will also need to be secured with masking tape before soldering. Next, we will be fitting six 10K resistors into the PCB, also vertically. The resistors go into position R2, R7, R8, R9, R10, and R11. Next is the transistor. M notice the flat edge on the component and match it to the flat edge on the silk screen. Our last resistor is the 2.1 kilo ohm resistor also fitted vertically into the PCB. Our next parts are the capacitors, starting with the small ceramic capacitor, which has no polarity. Our next capacitor is the electrolytic capacitor, which is polarized, so be sure to uh, insert the part into the PCB with the negative stripe facing the Netduino Mini uh, socket. Then line up the back of the voltage regulator with a white line on the PCB. You may want to shorten the legs of the regulator before soldering it as it sinks a lot of heat. Next, we're going to wire up the little 8 ohm speaker. To do this, just strip off 2 millimeters of plastic sheathing from the ends of the red and black wires. This is easy to do if you make two cuts on both sides of the wire and then pinch off the plastic. Next, we're going to add a little bit of solder to the solder pads on the speaker uh, so that the wires are easy to put on. Then solder the black wire to the left side pad on the speaker and the red wire to the right side pad of the speaker. It's a little easier if you have some flux and you apply that flux to the wires before soldering. Then gently fold the red wire over the black wire as seen on the video before inserting the speaker into the PCB. Next up, we have the male pin headers. Uh, you're going to need to cut two strips of 12 pins each. Insert the headers into the PCB and secure them with a piece of masking tape before soldering. Next, we insert the joysticks into the PCB. To ease fitting the joysticks into the PCB, you will need to gently bend the signal pins, the smallest pins, inwards uh, with a pair of tweezers, for instance. To ensure that the joystick fits flatly on the PCB, gently press on the frame of the joystick. Uh, do not press on the thumb cap really hard. Uh, it's not meant for that. 
Um, however, uh, if you move the thumb cap out of the way, you can easily uh, press fairly firmly on the frame uh, until it sits flush against the PCB. Then solder up the joysticks and be generous uh, with the solder on the supporting posts. Next, we insert the Neduino Mini into its socket. Uh, the Neduino Mini and the socket both have a cutout notch on the left side, so be sure to match those. As you insert the chip in its socket, uh, do it uh, slowly and gradually so that none of the pins get bent or broken. Make sure that the chip sits completely flat in its socket before uh, calling it good. Next, we're going to repeat the process with the LED driver chip. Uh, just like the Neduino Mini, it has a notch on one end be sure to match the notch with the notch that is on the socket for the chip. To ease the insertion process, you may want to uh, lay the chip flat on its side and bend the pins on each side as a group uh, and then try inserting it into the socket. Um, they are generally a little too far apart to just fit right the first time. So at this point, the console is complete. All the parts are there to make it work. So if you have a 9 volt adapter, just plug it in to test the console and make sure everything works. On startup, the console enumerates the files that are on the SD card and uh, gives you a little menu to pick uh, a program to run. If you don't have an SD card, you will see uh, a skull and crossbones across the screen instead, but uh, that will tell you that everything is working. Okay, so after this little test, we're going to wire up the 9 volt battery connector. Carefully fill the positive center of the connector with solder. Keep the solder liquid as you insert the red wire into the center connector. Then insert the black wire in the hole of the other part of the connector. Then close the metal clamp on the two wires to hold them firmly into place. Finally, solder up the black wire to the connector. Then uh, plug in the battery into the console and uh, give it a quick test to make sure that everything um, is working fine. The last step of the assembly is uh, about mounting the case bottom to the kit. Start by peeling off the protective sheet off of the case bottom. Next, mount the four acrylic standoffs onto the PCB. Using a rubber band, mount the battery to the case bottom using the cutouts in the case bottom. Another method for the battery is to simply put uh, masking tape on the side of the battery facing the PCB to prevent any shorts and uh, lay the battery flat on its connector and uh, simply keep the battery in place with the acrylic case bottom. It will not move. So congratulations on building your very own PIC64 game console. This is only the start of the fun though. The PIC64 console is in it. We know platform designed to learn digital electronics and C-sharp programming. It's also designed for prototyping projects very quickly. Thanks for supporting the project and helping to grow the open source software and open source hardware community.